people join. Um, so again, thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kate Remillard. I'm on the marketing team at BHT Studios in Matterport. And I'm your co-host today for Lunch with Lucy. We have a very special guest. Martha is here with us today. Before we get started, I just need to remind you um, that we welcome your questions. Please add them to the Q&A box on your screen, and we'll have time at the end of the show to get as many of those answered as possible. Um, you'll also see a few poll questions pop up on your screen as we go, so we encourage you to participate, and we'll share those results live. Um, stick around to the end of the show. We'll announce five winners of our DoorDash gift cards. Um, you must be present to win. So just hang on to the end for that. And then lastly, be sure to subscribe to Lucy's YouTube channel um, okay. to keep up to date with all of her amazing content she creates, her our archive of Lunch with Lucy's from you know the last two or three years. So many great interviews. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Lucy. All right, Lucy. Well, hello, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And I would like to introduce our guest, Martha Moisier. Uh, Martha is the president of, and, and also you are the president of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, yes. California Properties. Your, your uh, company is what, number two in the United States? We uh, are, we are number, we are ranked number two globally. Globally. the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Network. Yeah. Yes. That is, that, that, that is very impressive. Very. And, uh, and you also have, and you're also a general counsel. I am. Berkshire. I am. I'm acting as the general counsel for the company right now as well. So that's, that is a big hat to wear as well. Right? Wearing a couple of different hats <laughs> I'm wearing daily. Yes. <laughs> I had a pleasure to interview Martha just a couple of weeks ago uh, at her office. So if anyone is interested, please go to vht.com um, or go to youtube.com slash Lucy Edwards VHT, and you can uh, watch the whole beautiful interview. We talk a lot about the company, about the culture, agents, yes. uh, business. So it's it was an amazing time spent with you. Thank I had you, such a wonderful time with you, Lucy. <laughs> so <tired>. I'm back. <laughs> and yeah, so great. We are back. So thank you, guys. And I would like to start with a very important question. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of giving back to the community. Yes. When you support your community, you are investing in your own lifestyle as well. So let's talk about that. Okay. So we talked about this in the last interview, Lucy. Mm -hmm. We have a charitable foundation with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties. We are to remind you, we are about 270 Mandarin coastal miles from Santa Barbara down all the way down about 10 miles due north of the Mexican border and everywhere in between. And so we have five chapters of our charitable foundation and our agents give a portion of their commission, every single commission to the foundation. The money is collected in each of these five regions and a board for each of those five regions vote on local needs mm -hmm. to give back. So they can control what the money is spent on and invested. Absolutely. And we pride ourselves with uh, the foundation. We've given away uh, in grants of nearly $7 million right back into our communities that we serve. And, mm -hmm. you know, Richard Hathaway is so synonymous with luxury, right? Right. And, but we we serve all communities and we do first time home buyer fairs and we do things for individuals that aren't maybe are not in that luxury stratosphere. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, even in the most luxurious enclaves of the United States, there is significant need and people that really need help. Mm -hmm. And so we dig deep and we try to find those communities. We also allow our clients to nominate a grant. You know, they can make a grant request mm -hmm. for money, our agents, our clients, friends, family, so that we truly know those people we serve see that we are giving back into the communities we serve. No, that's that's amazing. And that is important. And that is your community. You walk outside and here you are, you are right there. So yes. you are supporting. It. Yes, absolutely. Well, that my next question is very close to the first one. Real estate agent is a liaison between the buyer and the community. And what how do you see the agent being a liaison? Are they uh, introducing the buyer to all little shops? Or how do you see that question? 
I am seeing that develop more and more. And, you know, you start seeing things, let's, we can't help this conversation without having AI, right? Our right. intelligence and of course, <laughs> Matterport and yep. their amazing products and Thank videos you. and mm-hmm. just the, the dollhouse views and all of those wonderful things. So I think it's really incumbent upon the, the agent to completely know the community that they are working in and mm-hmm. that they are selling in because you are selling a lifestyle not just a home, you're selling a lifestyle. And we all, one thing we learned through COVID is that we all really need each other more. And we really lean in, lean into our communities mm-hmm. more. I mean, we were, we were kind of captive in our own communities for, right. for let's face it, a good year. Right. And we didn't really branch out too much. So our communities became very important to us. And so our agents do an exceptional job exploring the communities, knowing the communities in which they serve. And it's, it's very important for our agents to be very aware of every nuance of the importance that that client puts on the community and they're able to answer all the questions yeah that's that's a good answer thank you (laughs) passing on the torch and we were talking about it how you work with your children on educating them on investing in your children also that it is important to participate in the community it is important to respect others like it kills me when someone is crossing uh, when kids are crossing the street uh, from the mm-hmm. school bus they are 17 years old and it takes them five minutes to cross the street when you are late uh, you know so yes. i think it is so important to invest in your kids and passing the torch explaining about the community and the charities yes. and uh, teaching the next generation uh, the art of giving back. And you were saying that it's done through coaching and mentoring. It is. And I believe we all have a responsibility to our own children and to maybe some other children that are falling outside of parental advice. We all know, you know, you have a daughter. I have four children. Some of their friends maybe had parents that were compromised a little bit. And so I've always made it my mission to really wrap my arms around children and to coach them and to mentor them and to show them that life is good and life is great and life can be grand. But respect is very, very significant to me um, as I, I was brought up learning how to respect others and elders and trying to teach my children that. But at the same time, also trying to teach them the sky's the limit you know, and mentoring, especially my daughters. So girls need a little extra sometimes, those of you that have had daughters. It's a little rough to be a, a, you know, middle school daughter, a girl. Lots of drama. (laughs) Lots of drama. And you're like, okay, let's just get through this drama and focus on what's really important. But I think it's so important to bring your children and other children into your world. You know, I, I was a single mother for many years. Uh, I, I told you a story about my daughter, uh, you know, I was practicing law 30 plus years ago and I had my little daughter uh, with me because the babysitter didn't show up for the day. What else are you going to do? Right. I have to be a mother. I can't simply leave my daughter with someone I don't know. Mm -hmm. And she was a, she was a toddler. And then, you know, I have to do my job. I had to report to court and I had to go argue a very important motion. So there I went in my suit, my briefcase with my little umbrella stroller, my daughter <laughs> sitting in it. Thankfully, she was very well behaved. And we sat in the courtroom and I thought, oh, no, here it goes. You know, what's going to happen? The judge is going to call my matter. And I'm in a sea of men in this room, maybe one other woman. And I didn't know her. And I was like, hmm, can I really pop my daughter over here to trust them when I go stand up in front of the room? And that's what I was going to do. But then the judge took the bench. And he said, hmm, I see you brought your little legal assistant, Ms. Mosier. <laughs> and I said, oh, here it goes. I'm going to get a tongue lashing, right? And he said, I want to hear your matter in chambers. <sighs> For a lawyer, that's very daunting. You know, everybody else got to stand up and have their matter heard in other right. court. He said, you'll come back in chambers with me. So I thought, here it goes. Put, put, the little, put her in her stroller, rolled her back behind the bailiff, around the court clerk, back into the judge's office, which is the judge's chambers. And he opened his arms up. He said, you brought a baby into my courtroom. God bless you. And so I thought, okay, I can do this. And it was a wonderful thing. He's just playing with a zipper on his robe. It was a wonderful story. And from that point on, I said, I will never put my children after my career. And rather than 
park them someplace. I'm going to incorporate them. That was a light bulb that went off in my head. So they all knew where everything was, you know, in my office, they'd leave little love letters. They'd come into my office. Clearly when I had to work a full eight hour day, they weren't there. They were in school or preschool or whatever, Mm -hmm. but I did incorporate them into my work so that when mommy went away to work, they didn't, they knew where I was going and they knew it was important for mom to go to work and they knew all my coworkers and so I just thought that was really important for me to That is integrate such a beautiful them. story. Thank yeah. you. And you still do that. You still do a lot of I things do. with your daughters. Yes. You're hanging out on the beach, cleaning it. She's uh, yes. one of your daughters yes. is the environmentalist. Yes, she's an environmentalist. My daughter, Sydney, is an environmentalist. She went to Berkeley and became very much involved in policy and actually proudly starting law school in two weeks in Washington, D.C. Mm. But she um, said, hey, mom. And I thought it was really neat because she said, hey, mom you know how I go to you, go to your charity events with you. Something that's important to me is beach cleanup. And I said, great, let's do it. And she goes, we're doing it right now. And I said, okay, we put on our rubber gloves. And while everybody was out sunning on the beach, there we were with our gloves and, you know, our bag picking up trash. And it was, it was something that she was sharing with me, kind of giving back to me after I had kind of taught her the ropes on you know, doing things to protect our environment, to protect people, to care for people, to care for something greater than yourself. So I thought it came full circle and that, I felt good about that. No, that is, that is yeah. wonderful. That's a, that's a different daughter. That's not yes. the daughter who just, not had, the a daughter who just had the baby here. So we have four <laughs> children and they're all scattered, but yes, that's the one daughter going away to law school. So I think well, congratulations. Good. You did you. you did something right. Look at that. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know, they do it themselves, but I think you have to set an example. Well, you have to set the example. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You have to be there for your children to uh they they basically take over, you know. They really do. They really do. And I think you have to reach for me, I had to reach a little further from my children because there were some children in our lives. In fact, we had one boy that lived with us for about a year whose parents were really struggling. And I think you just need to embrace these children. It's such a difficult time during their junior high and their high school years. It's very confusing, right? Mm -hmm. And so as long as they have a a cheerleader there for them, somebody say, hey, you'll always have a place to lay your head and um, I'm here for you no matter what. I think it's important. It is important. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Marcia. Yes. Thank you. Um, I would like to talk about coaching and the importance of chilling channeling your mm-hmm. feelings uh, in the right direction. And you have your favorite poet and author, Maya Angelou. You may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced to them. Yes. I thought it was so beautiful. And you, you, you're quoting uh, that in, in so many interviews. So Thank please you. open up. Thank you. Um, Amaya Angelou, if you ever have an opportunity to read her biography, please do. She's a remarkable, remarkable icon. God rest her soul. And she passed away several years ago. But, you know, you can imagine for someone, a woman to say this, a woman of color that grew up in the South, you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, to be able to say something like that, right? You can't control all this negative things Mm -hmm. happening to you make no mistake, she was seriously discriminated against, right? right. During yeah. her lifetime. But you can choose to not be reduced by these negative comments, negative events that are happening. And so I have that taped on my computer oh. at, at work because, you know, the, uh, throughout the day, we are all faced with sometimes some negative things and that happen to us. And so I'm like, I'm not going to be reduced by this. <laughs> this is happening, <laughs> but I'm going to choose my attitude because, you know, that's the one thing we can have control over is our attitude. You can have your liver taken away. You can have all your belongings taken away. You can have your livelihood taken away, your health taken away, but you always have your attitude. No one can take away your attitude, but you. So. Yeah. I, I personally believe that I have yes. a positive attitude. I yes. try to stay with it because it helps me through the day to be positive and productive. When yes. I'm negative, I'm so not productive. I might as well turn off my computer and go for a walk. Yes. I agree. I agree. And I do have to, you know, I, I talk a lot about positive attitude and that let's be real. I mean, we all have negative days or things that we're struggling through, but you know, your attitude is a choice. Like I always say, choose joy, choose happiness. It's a choice. And I have to remind sometimes my children of that or my husband, and they have to remind me too. <laughs> They're like, remember what you said, mom. <laughs> so you have to make a conscientious choice. I think sometimes to be positive and to be happy. It's, beats the alternative so how do you uh, how wh- what about you being at work because i saw your office it's first mm-hmm. of all it's a very neat 
well-organized, focused office. That's for sure. All of mm. your uh, colleagues, uh, they, they are in the same. I think you, you all, it kind of rubs off. You know, you're, you're all very focused and very well organized, but um, you also have this great respect for, for example, you were getting ready for the uh, for the managers meeting and you had those beautiful folders for everybody. You mm -hmm. put so much thought into every step, um, how you do that. And you have the children and grandchildren and, the, and so many charities. You are sitting on so many boards mm -hmm. of so many charities. Well, I think you just have to prioritize and every single employee, we have about over 300 employees at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services California Properties, just in our small footprint in Southern California. And every single employee, I hope, knows that they are as valued as anybody else. So everybody feels they have something to offer, that we're going to respect them, and that they have a right to belong. So I want to take very, very good care, and I try to, but it's not just me alone. I have a village of people and a team that are so incredibly remarkable. I know Allison Jones is watching right now and she runs our marketing department and she's mm -hmm. phenomenal. I mean, Allison will make an agent feel like they're the only one in the room when she's coaching them through a very high end listing appointment or something like that. And then we bring on the whole team and we make certain that everyone feels very valued and very valuable and that their opinion matters. And we try to make it very buttoned up that way. And I think, that flows through our whole corporation. It starts from the top. I mean, Gino Bufari, as you know, you yeah. know Gino very well. Yeah. He is a leader that without fail meets with every single one of his leaders of his operating company, like myself and so many others. There's about 40, 40 plus of us mm -hmm. every single week. He meets with us and talks with us about our goals for that week, our wildly important goals. So he really has set the tone from the top and I have learned a great deal from Gino Blafari about managing my schedule. And if you really narrow it down to a few weekly wigs, wildly important goals, maybe three, you designate them on a Monday, what your lead measures are going to be, you lay them out, right? Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the week, hopefully you have them done. And then we report right back to Gino the next week on what we got done. So it's it really has kind of been it, it evasive through our through our a company, I think. This yeah, and company. Gino is also so focused. And he, um, and when I ask him, what would you wish to uh, to an, an an agent, a person, what would you wish to me? Uh, and his his answer was, be on be on schedule, create a schedule, and be on schedule. And if you ask Deidre, his right hand, um, what's the most important part of your job? Deidre would say keep Gino on schedule. So mm -hmm. that is, uh, and that's what you are. You are very, very schedule oriented and that and focused. And that's, I think is a great success um, of your career. It's because, and that that's how you can accomplish your goals because yeah. you know where you are now and where you're going to be in two hours. Right. I, need, well, I need to learn a bit. Well, I'll tell you, Lucy, <laughs> it's taken me 30 years, 30 plus years to learn this, but you can't get caught up in the whirlwind. So there's a great book, uh, The Four Disciplines of Execution, and they talk about that. They say, establish your wigs and what the lead measures are that you're going to undertake to accomplish those goals, and don't get caught up in the whirlwind. We all get caught up. There's drama all around us. Some people like drama more than others, right? <laughs> yeah. have to learn how to kind of park that person over here and say, we'll get back to you, and they'll swirl and swirl and swirl. So we just have to get back on schedule. And I have an amazing, amazing right hand, Ashley Thomas. And you met Ashley yeah, mm -hmm. and she keeps me on schedule. She's like this with me all the time. So you have to really step out of the whirlwind and then get back on schedule. Do, okay. Do we have any uh, polls? I, I got so carried away with Martha that I didn't <laughs> even think about any polls. Um, yeah. And then please, do we have any comments? How you guys deal with the... Uh, uh, being caught up in little things and nonsense and, and forgetting yeah. about the most important, the, the priority that you had to accomplish today, uh, the A uh, tasks, not the C tasks. So please put it in the chat, share with us. I, I would love to learn from all of you because I get very much uh, like get off the track and, uh, and I need to make sure, I, I'm a Buffini girl. 
and uh, and someone yes. gave me and she always talk about focus so i will show it to you at my desk mm -hmm. i have a plaque that says focus <laughs> <laughs> one word focus um yeah so what, did, what did allison just say um allison said martha is an amazing leader and leads us all by example that's nice, Allison. And by the way, I, I you, had, I've had the privilege to interview Martha, uh, to interview Allison mm -hmm. as well. And Allison has really, really good and very interesting tips for marketing. Very creative, yes. way, way out of the box. Yeah. I mean, the things that uh, that Allison is bringing to the table are amazing for remarkable. your agents. Very, remarkable. very remarkable. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. That's one thing I know as a leader. You have to know what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Design and marketing is not my strength. <laughs> So we pass that over to the, the experts in the field. I, you can't be a subject matter expert on everything. And I think good leaders know that and they delegate and they're very comfortable who they delegate to. Right. You have to. You have right. to. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. And we oh, asked Allison. Uh, Allison. <laughs> Allison is on the chat today. Hi, Allison. <laughs> She's back in San Diego. And love her, Allison. So what, do, what, kind, what polls do we have? Yeah, so we asked the group um, if they feel they have good work-life balance, um, and the majority, 47%, said yes, so that's great for them. Nice, very Love proud that. of you all. Love Take that. me with you. I know, and then 42% said sometimes, and we had a couple people who said not at all, so mm. yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm in the sometimes category. Yeah, yes. And then we also asked about volunteering and how often people are able to volunteer in their communities. Um, and we had 38% of um, our attendees today say that they volunteer multiple times per month, which is amazing. I think that's absolutely outstanding. And then 48% um, said once a year. So great. I mean, anything we can do to give back is amazing. So that's great. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Carla, for joining us today. Carla was on our team. Um, and uh, thank you. I appreciate yeah, you joining nice. us. Oh, I, let, I forgot. I forgot to ask the rest of my questions. Got carried <laughs> away again. Um, united we stand, divided we fall. Yes. Very important that women stick together. And men and women, of course, and I'm not singling out men here, but I think it is so important for us to really bring up the people in our work community and our personal community, because there are a lot of very, very smart, probably online here, very smart Gen Zs and millennials, and I certainly am not one of those, but I do have the luxury of time and experience. And really and truly, one beautiful thing about getting older is wisdom. And people used to always say this, I'm like, who wants wisdom? I want youth, right? Mm -hmm. But I am embracing the wisdom now because I am being asked by young women to help mentor them. And that to me is the biggest compliment that I could ever receive. And probably my most favorite role is working with young women. And, you know, they see what you've done, where you've navigated. I said, well, I fell down a few times. I've made some mistakes. Let, let me help you learn from my mistakes. And I wish that somebody would have told this to me earlier in my life. And just things that I've learned that they can build on. And that is my way of giving back. Um, you know, people mm -hmm. that have under, you know, single women, women that have gone through divorces and things like that, that are still trying to work and support their children. I've been there. I've done that. Like kind of, you've been there and done that, <laughs> right? And we kind of know how to navigate that, Lucy. And we know, look, there are days when you think you're not going to make it, uh, where tears are flowing and babies are crying and there's no one around to help and you feel helpless and hopeless. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I both have probably gone through that. Yep. And uh, here we are and we made it and I think we're stronger for it. So I really try to wrap my arms around some of those people that maybe have issues uh, in the home or um, my mother passed away when I was quite young of breast cancer. So I know several young women who are lost their mothers quite young. So I try to reach out to them and 
we have a little bonding group and I mentor a couple of them right now. So um, it's my way of giving back. But you, you are also giving back, but you lost your mom and I'm very sorry about that. But you, you are on, the, on so many boards and some of them are all about health and you learn yes. so much. And now you yes. are sharing your knowledge how to take care of yourself, uh, how at age 42, you can just drop dead at heart yep. disease and doesn't matter if you drink and smoke or not, it, yes. you can really get sick. Yes. Well, we had the American Heart Association reach out to me um, through Ashley, my assistant, and she said, Martha, you must meet with these people. I said, Ashley, I am on so many boards and I am so incredibly busy. It's a wonderful cause. And she said, just attend the Zoom. So I did. And I was sold. So uh, the director for the American Heart Association said, we see that you're prolific on social media. We think you will make a difference. And I said, tell me what it involves. And they said, well, let, let us ask you something first. Do you know anyone close to you that has suffered from heart disease? And that hit me like a ton of bricks. I had lost my very close friend and next door neighbor uh, six months prior to this interview. Mm -hmm. um, to heart disease. She was a very successful businesswoman, owned her own business and fell in the parking lot of her business and collapsed and was not given CPR and subsequently passed away, uh, leaving an only child. Uh, and her this young neighbor of mine had lost her father uh, months prior to that. So it was very, it hit home for me. And, and my brother, uh, whom I'm extremely close to is a physician and he experienced some, uh, some blockage. Mm -hmm totally unsuspecting and had to have stints put in. And a, a, one of our managers, Kyle Kent in Santa Barbara, a very prolific figure in Santa Barbara, Montecito, an amazingly talented individual and good friend of mine had some very serious heart issues he was facing as well. And they, these people were all under 60. So I thought, oh my God, we've got to get involved. And did you know that that women are two thirds most more likely to not get CPR than a man in an emergency situation. Why? Everyone would like to kiss a woman. No? <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's just the stigma maybe of touching a woman and you're getting close, you know, to her uh, chest. And, and they're just, there, there's such a, there's such a misconception mm -hmm. out there that women don't have heart attacks. Mm -hmm. And by the way, heart disease, has eclipsed the, all three female cancers was the number one cause of death for women over 40. So it's staggering and shocking. Mm -hmm. So we got, we jumped in with both feet and we got very involved in a nine week initiative called Go Red for Women in San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, we raised a ton of money without even trying. And I said, look, I'm not about asking our agents and our community for more money here. This is a tough time, tough economy, but I am all about awareness. So we did about nine CPR classes in AED, the defibrillator class. I mean, you know, you walk into a building and there's defibrillators. Do you know mm -hmm. how to use one? No. Most people don't know how to use them. So we tried to train all of our agents and all of our employees with the thought of even if we save one life, it's worth it. It's worth it. And incidentally, we raised th almost $36,000 in this short little period to give back to the American Heart Association. So that was really important. You've got to really, you got to take care of yourself, you know, like, you got to put your oxygen on before you tend to everybody else on the right. plane. Mm -hmm. It's true with your heart health. Well, we thank you. A lot. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. Sch I scheduled uh, a doctor's appointment for my husband for checkup. So excellent. <laughs> I, excellent. And I already had mine. So yes. here we yes. go. Calcium score. Make sure you get that done. Because a lot of people don't know about that. And that's about the blockage. If you have blockage in your arteries that lead to your heart and that's unattended to, that's heart attack. If you have blockage that leads to your brain in your arteries, that stroke. So heart and heart attacks and stroke are on the rise and you really need to get that taken care of. And stress probably is not helping at all. No, no. High blood pressure is, High blood is a killer. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, let's something beautiful here. Your favorite quote from Mother Teresa. Yes. Let no one ever come to you without leaving you better and happier. Absolutely. And I love that. And it's when you read it, it's a little bit confusing, but don't let anybody come to you without leaving better or happier, right? So you make someone's life happy and better when, uh, when you touch someone's life, they yes. are happy and better. Yes, I think so. I mean, the last time I checked, we're all mortal beings, right? <laughs> I've not met one person who has just proven that fact. And so what are you going to do 
to have your values and your gifts live on. And so I think that's so incredibly important. If you can just make one person's day a little happier or a little better every day, you've made a difference. Well, that's, that's beautifully said. Uh, where are we, Kate, uh, on time? Uh, we have to wrap up. I can't, this was like the fastest 30 minutes ever. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> surprise, surprise. We see Martha <laughs> love to talk. <laughs> when, when I was at Martha's office, our interview was also uh, more than, longer than average. Yes. And I was there for two hours. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh my gosh. Well, let's go ahead and wrap up. And we just want to thank you, Martha, so much. And also oh, there, there um, are two questions then Q and A, hey, hey, please. Yeah. Um, okay. So one of the questions is wondering, um, kind of back to the work life balance, um, with, you know, agents constantly being available on their phone and spending so much time, um, wondering what you do for people who answer calls and talk to clients on the weekends, perks or flex time or rules? I'm not sure. That's a great question because we are getting our phones ringing off the hook, right? If they're not ringing, we're getting text messages. So you're always having to check everything. And that's why I don't wear one of, I don't wear like a Apple watch. Because I, don't like, I can't, I can't have one more device that can get a hold of me, right? <laughs> I just, my advice to somebody that is constantly on the phone is you have to physically put your phone down. And I have been told actually by some very, very, um, amazing human beings that I care about deeply that they didn't feel that I was being present in the moment because my, I had one eyeball on my phone. And I think that's probably my life story. And so that really resonated with me. And, and I actually put the flip the phone over and silence it so that I don't have a distraction so that I'm talking directly to the individual, but let's be real. We're in real estate, right? <laughs> and real estate doesn't sleep. Right. And then, yeah, but if someone needs you and wants you, they can leave a message, they can text you and you can read it later. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I have some amazing friends and agents that work for our company. And by the way, we have some of the top agents in the whole entire Berkshire network. Crystal Clark is number one in the entire, on the entire globe. And there's just so many other amazing, very talented, mm -hmm. gifted agents that we have. And they have all told me that they absolutely explain to their client certain times that they are not going to be available. So that needs to be your family time. That needs to be your time that you are giving to your children, giving to your spouse or your significant other or your friends. Um, and so it's so incredibly important to have that work-life balance. And I, someone very wise once said to me, you know, Martha, you cannot be in the picture if you're looking at it, if you're standing in the frame. Oh, that is cool. You can Isn't then be in the cool? picture if you're standing, standing in the, in the frame. frame, right? If you're standing in the frame watching the family gathering or watching a children, a child's uh -huh. very important event, you're not in the picture, you're in the frame. So I always think about that. And then I flip my phone over. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, um, we do have our show next month um, with, let's see, Jonathan Lipstein. Um, and he's going to share his top 10 reasons to leverage AI and specifically chat GPT into your real estate business. So mm -hmm. super interesting, timely, cool discussion. Please join us next month. Yeah, actually, Jonathan is uh, teaching CE class here in Florida at Beaches MLS. Uh, and the class is an hour and a half, but he will spend only 30 minutes with us. So I, uh, I'm inviting you to listen to what he has to say and ask questions. Yes. Thank you, right. Michelle. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for staying with us and Thank uh, you, and, Lucy. and for that beautiful, absolutely conversation. It's not an interview; it's a conversation. Conversation, yes. conversation with Lucy. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful spending time with you, as always. Thank you. All the Thank best, you. everybody. Hi, Allison. Allison, I, I, I was I thought I was going to see you um, uh, at the event, but I will see you next time I stop by. <laughs> and say hello to Glenn. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank Have you. a great day. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye.